Three, two, one, and action. Making the real hustle is one of the most challenging jobs in television. Con games are a matter of trial and error, and we've had our fair share of both. People often ask, is every scam successful? Are we ever recognized? Or have we been caught red-handed? And the answer is yes, yes, and sometimes. In this show, we're going to reveal what happens when scams go wrong. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. The proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. <laughs> Action. Yeah, they might always win, but sometimes, just sometimes, it didn't always go exactly as planned. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those are the biggest <laughs> thing I've ever Here's some bits they didn't want you to see. So, I've got a test of skill. You've got to balance the 50p on your finger, your index finger. Now, you've got to get the card out from under the 50p without the 50 falling to the table. And you can only use one finger, right? Anybody can do this, I'll buy them a drink. Because this <laughs> is hard. Ready? Just say action. Look at that, look how elegantly and beautifully I handle these. It's like, uh, all right. So, Paul, what'd you say? Paul Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> That's about the most insulting thing anybody's ever said to me, I have to be honest. Oops. I don't want to sit that, but it's got bubbles in it. It's a bit dangerous. I'd be like, <laughs> Of course, by the way, I need to mention the fact that if I do get it, you have to yeah, go. It's uh, mental. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Take 27. OK, ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit there until one of you gets me a whiskey. When it okay, doll. See you. The girls stagger their arrival so they don't look like they're together. Caprice needs to make sure she doesn't spend over £10 to guarantee she gets two twenties as change. If the shopkeeper gives her anything different, then Caprice has to say she prefer 20s instead. Seven fifty. This is it. The shopkeeper pulls out two 20s. Jess is ready to do a distraction. Now can Caprice do the switch? She's done it. Now she needs to ask for the change and attempt to hand over the counterfeit notes. Thank you. <laughs> you know, can I just, do you have anything smaller? Can I get, do you have like fives and tens? I didn't give you that one. That's the one I gave you. Oh, you know, that's the dodgy notes. She's been rumbled. The notes are sticking out from beneath the notebook. Caprice needs to get herself out of a sticky situation. I can see my notes over there. Where are your notes? There is, look. Just this one I gave you. And the other <laughs> hand. <laughs> Caprice is speechless, so Jess steps in. Do you check your tills regularly? Yeah, and I check the notes every single note that comes in. Well, then how can you just give her those then? Well, this is not my notes, I don't care. So I'm not going to give you a change. For the first time in real hustle history, a scam is about to end in disaster. Caprice is in danger of getting herself arrested. <laughs> Acting quickly, Jess leaves to get Alex and Paul. Is she leaving? <clears throat> I don't know. Huh? This might be with you, I don't know. Quickly devising an off-the-cuff rescue plan, the boys make their entrance. Gwyneth, please. Young lady, try and buy anything in yeah. here a few minutes ago. That's one just there. A quick flash of their wallets is enough to convince the shopkeeper that they're the police. The shopkeeper points out Caprice, so Paul pretends to deal with her. The hustlers have taken control of the situation. This lady try and pass counterfeit money. Is this your money? That's right. That's yeah. your money? Yeah. This is real. So that's the 50 pounds he gave me. Yeah, that's counterfeit too. Paul then throws a spanner in the works. Apparently, the 50 that Caprice used is counterfeit as well. 
but nothing's got past this lady yet. I've got a pen there if you want me to scrub that. No, yeah, check out those pens are not really. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the 50 outside with the, uh, with a proper scope. I've got the pen here. Those are not as reliable as the ones that we have in our car, in our patrol car. To Caprice's relief, she's out of the shop for good, and the boys have got her £50 back, as well as the genuine £40 she received in change. It's not how they planned it, but they've got exactly what they wanted. Reassuring the shopkeeper that he'll come back with her money, Alex exits the shop never to return. Not only have they saved Caprice's bacon, but they've turned a disastrous scam into a success. I froze. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm looking for Colton Road. Colton Road. Yeah. And sometimes even the most nimble fingers get caught. Is it? Well, I'm trying to. I mean, we're here, aren't we? Sorry, I wouldn't even bother we me. Can. You and sometimes even the hustlers are outsmarted. You've got to get the coins to switch places without the bottle falling over and you can't touch the bottle. <laughs> That's very good. A round, of, <laughs> a round of drinks for Katie. Right, you're fired, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so the Mark and Mr Phillips are at the restaurant, waiting for Alex. Dodgy dealer Paul is still hanging about like a bad smell, desperate to nab the stamp from under Alex's nose. If you want to do the deal right now, I can go to 1500. I think I should just wait for Ian. He ups his offer to 1500 pounds, but Mr. Phillips is still keen to wait for Alex. After all, he's a gentleman of his word, and that's only fair. And here comes Alex. Hey, how you doing? Ian? Yeah. Yes. Go. All right. My assistant's going to Apologising yet again to the Mark for the delayed laptop, he then gets straight down to his other business, buying that very rare stamp. Can I see the... Uh... Yes. OK. This, this is, this is the one that, that, that I, yeah. I inquired about. Yeah, that's the one that I'd, I'd very much like to... Right. Can I ask what you're interested in paying him? Well, I would say... I'm, I'm happy to make you an offer here of, of 1500 if that's... that's 1500 a Yeah. The stamps a cracker, and he's happy to offer fifteen hundred pounds, matching Paul's offer. Well, hold on. I mean, I'm, that's the same offer I made. While we were waiting for you, wherever you were. Well, I, I, so, I had to go out on, on business with, that I have with each gentleman. So, so, you know, fifteen hundred would be the deal. I could do it cash. Well, I can do it cash. You can do cash. Absolutely. Well, cash. I'm, I'm here prepared to do me. cash. It's all getting a bit ugly now. In fact, Paul starts an all-out bidding war and pulls out a massive wad of cash. If you're serious about selling... Well, I've come here to see you, haven't I? Yeah. I can give you 3,000 in cash. Right. OK. Today. And that's it. He ups his offer to three grand, which he puts in an envelope. All right, could, could I just ask, with all due respect, because this, I feel that I've, I've set up this meeting and it's kind of been hijacked well, a little bit. I agree, but so, we've done a lot of business together okay, over yeah. the years. And we've never done any yeah. business. And there's plenty more business to come. Can you just give us a couple of minutes? Is, is that okay? You've got three grand there, yeah? yeah? Well, look, my money's on the table. Right, okay. okay. Just give us a minute and then all right, okay. let me talk to uh, Ian and... I don't know this guy, but my money's always been good. OK. OK. Cool. Paul then goes outside, leaving a very stunned table. Oh, that was a bit intense, I thought. I'd say. Yeah, well, he's uh, a bit pushy, isn't he? Yeah. Alex right. now goes in for the kill. I think three grand's a very good offer. Right. But I don't think you might realise the value of what you have. Sounds interesting. It, it is interesting. Do you know what the last one of these, which came up an auction, sold, and it was sold in uh, about 1990? No. OK. As you can see, it's got the same cancellation mark, which is what makes these um, of high value. This fetched wow. £19,500. Wow. So uh, I don't want to see you enter into a, a business deal where okay, you're going to lose a lot of money. Right. So okay. What's the bottom line? If this sold for twenty thousand in nineteen ninety, it is not illogical to presume that, that we can get thirty thousand like yeah. or more. So if mm. I give you fifteen hundred today, and I give you fifteen percent of the sale price, 
then you stand to make considerably more than £3,000. Yeah, but I need cash. Mr Phillips likes Alex's deal, but he's adamant. He wants three grand in cash before he leaves the restaurant. But you do realise that what I'm offering you uh, is a little yeah, bit more, right? But that's what I've come for. OK. Um... Alex only has 1,500 quid. Where on earth could he get right, another uh... grand and a half at such short notice? Can you give me two minutes? Yep, two minutes. What's happening? Well, he, the gentleman here, he still wants three grand. Alex now turns his full attention to the mark. What I was going to ask, I have 1,500. I believe you carry 1,500 as well. That's the cash he's brought for the laptop. If I can get an advance payment, so to speak, done, and I'll make it worth your while, but I'll offer you 5% of the sale price. He's not buying anyway, so it needs to be a bit more than it for me. You are from the 5%. How much would you like? 10%. 10? Yeah. This guy drives a hard bargain. That was a bit easy. Ten percent. I know I can get a lot of money for this stamp. Well, I know what I like and I like what I see right now. Okay, we've we've struck a deal. We're right. going to give you three thousand cash. Okay. So we pay this man. Fifteen. So the scam has gone to plan. The mark hasn't recognised the hustlers or Sid Owen, and he's just handed over all that cash for his share of a worthless stamp. But this scam hasn't gone to plan. In fact, something has just gone terribly wrong. Something even the hustlers weren't expecting. Out, Alex takes a closer look at the Mark's cash. It's clear from his face that he knows something isn't quite right. Oh, sure, yeah. But ever the professional, he puts the money away and leaves, together with Polly and Sid. But on his way out, he's talking to the show's producers over his radio mic. Guys, that money looked like that looks faked. Yeah. That money, okay? I think we're being done by him right now. That is fake money is it? that he gave us. The producer goes over to speak to the hustlers and examine the money. We've been given paper. This guy's doing something. Well done. Well done. I looked at him straight in the face and he smiled. Yeah, that, is that is paper. Yeah. There's no question. It's all fake. But what on earth was going on in what turned out to be the strangest scam in 11 series of The Real Hustle? Had the mark been unlucky at the cash machine, or could he be trying to hustle the hustlers? Alex, Paul, and the show's producers went in to find out. Where did you get this? Where did you print this? And what? This morning. Gary, we suspect you know you're being filmed for a TV show. Now, the objective of the show is to take your money and then give it back to you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, everything you gave us was fake money. If I asked her to look at this my note, would you say it's a genuine note? Oh, good Do you think that is a real hologram bit there? Yeah. I mean, you're, you realise why we're asking you this question, it's because it's legally a very murky area for us to be seen to be handling. Uh, fake. I mean, I instantly, when I saw this, that's why I looked at you for a brief second and you kind of had a little twinkle in your eye. But that was instantly fake to me. Paul gives the mark the benefit of the doubt. Everybody completely understands this has all caught you a little bit off guard because, you know, the idea was we would leave you, you would find out that, you know, you'd bought a rubbish stamp that wasn't worth anything and everybody was gone. Then we'd come back and we'd give you your money back. But because you've given us that, it's kind of changed yeah. from being a TV show to being a bit of a problem for us. I just need you to understand that when you handed over illegal money, right, and, and believe you me, we've tried to use counterfeit cash as good as this one, and we're not allowed to use it on the show. The Mark's still looking puzzled, but Paul lays it on the line. This is kind of exactly the type of thing we try and teach people not to I, take. So, so that we're kind of, in a way, trying to protect you, you know, I know from what this. You're saying, I know what you're saying, guys. Hold your hands up. So tell me what, what was going on, and then we'll understand what was going on. I wasn't totally 100% convinced. I, I actually didn't believe the deal was real. I didn't think the laptop was worth £1,500, right. to be honest with you. So he claimed he'd smelt a rat all along. Seems like he simply didn't believe a second-hand laptop could be worth such a high asking price. Thinking the deal was well dodgy from the start, rather than hand over genuine cash, he decided to use a pile of fake notes he'd brought with him, just in case he was being ripped off. Did you have any, at any point, did you have any inkling that you were on a TV show? 
Can I see that? And it turned out that it wasn't only the Mark who was being cautious. He later claimed in a national newspaper that his 13-year-old daughter thought the setup was bogus all along, warning her dad, it sounds like you're on the real hustle. Of course, Alex and Paul were more than aware that it can be a criminal offence to be in possession of counterfeit banknotes. The event was reported to the police, but despite carrying out a series of inquiries, in the end, it was decided there was no case to answer. So right, did the mark hustle the hustlers? The one, give you Not this time.